When it comes to your signal chain, I truly believe that the amp is at least as important as the guitar. If the guitar is your paintbrush, then the amp is really the canvas and the paint. It's incredibly important to find the amp that suits your style. And I've really been on a journey going through so many different amps. And it all really started with the Tone King Sky King, which was my first introduction to Mark Bartel. Uh, the Sky King I have actually was made after Mark Bartel left Tone King and he started this company, Bartel. This is the big daddy of Bartel amps. It's a head and cabinet version of the Roseland, which is a 45 watt 6L6 amp. Now it's a complicated amp and the way I'm going to structure this video is going to be a bit complicated. We're going to start with the primary colors, so to speak. And what you just heard with the Les Paul was one of the sort of tweed settings. Let's hear a strap with the same exact settings. And then I'm gonna take you through the ways in which you can really sculpt a sound out of this amp. Trying to come up with a definitive way to describe this amp to you, but it's it's quite difficult to do. Uh, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Okay, so what's the most important element of this? If I was explaining it to someone, this amp is supposed to run the gamut of sort of vintage to classic rock sort of sounds. I consider this amp to be a tweed amp, but with really powerful tone controls that allow it to not mimic because that doesn't sound like an authentic thing but to really have the tonal characteristics as well as the gain characteristics the reverb characteristics and tremolo of various other types of amp if you start with the tone controls in the middle okay you're going to get the most tweed tones so a reasonable amount of bass, a reasonable amount of treble, but not too much scooping, not too big and full of a sound. The idea here is probably easiest, easiest to explain by how you would get a black face, clean mid 50s, 60s sound. If you turn the, the bow controls up to 10, you get the most amount of bass and treble, but also the most amount of scooping. The main idea though, is that as you turn them up, the amount of gain on offer gets lower and lower and lower because if you have the most bass and the most treble, but you also had the same amount of gain available in the gain knob, the volume knob, it would just become too much to cope with. It would become too bassy, it'd become too trebly. So not only do the best clean tones come from have the volume gain knob down at three, you also turn up the tone controls all the way and that reduces what the three means, if that makes sense. And then you use the master volume to push the actual volume of the amp all the way up so you have that set on full and I want to say this is the quietest 45 watt amp I've come across in many ways just because of the way that is if you want big fender clean tones if you're going for a bigger tweed sound or martially sound it can get a lot louder because it has a lot more gain on offer so equally if you turn the tone and knobs down to zero and you start 
pushing the volume knob up to five, six, seven, you have to then turn the master volume down a long way, right? And you get much more saturated plexi tones, a much more upper mid crunch, no scooping, not too much bass, right? Think classic rock tones. Now, I'm gonna take you through some of these tones in a very informal sort of, I just sat there and tweeted, tweedled with the, tweedled? Tweet with the knobs. Um, to try and get some of these sounds in a quick way, right? But I want to explain as much as possible as we go through. Let's try it. I've been trying to think about how to do this for a long time. I'm going to be using a single pickup P90 guitar here. It's got a really transparent open sound, so it should demonstrate this quite well. So you can hear in the first one, we've got the bass and treble on zero, the volume on five, the master volume on four. And this is going to give you that nice vintage plexi sound, but without too much saturation because I haven't got the volume gain up too high. Okay, so I think that had a pretty cool sort of vintagey sound to it in that plexi sort of sound. Now I'm going to just go the opposite and turn the, the knobs up to 10 to hear the sort of fendery sound. Just so you know, I had to then push the volume of this up in the edit. Even though the master volume is the same, with the tones all the way up, it does drop the volume. Okay, now the tone knobs are both in the middle, which gives it a tweed sound. And that to me means the upper mid crunch is not too much like it was in the plexi. The fullness uh, on, and scooping of the tone, like the full on tone black face sound is also not there. This is that recognizable-ish tweed sound. Um, again, I want to say here, these none of these are tweaked to be the best possible sound I can get for this guitar at this moment. This is really just a demo. Later, or in a part two, we're going to get to my favourite different sounds. So this next sound is the sort of plexi overdrive sound as opposed to what he describes as the saturated plexi sound, if that makes sense. So here we drop the bass to zero, keep the treble at five, and I've turned, I've got the volume on seven. Now what this feels like is, I, I really enjoy this setting actually, although the bass, there's less bass, there's more gain in the low end, if that makes sense. It fills out the tone a little bit. Let's hear what it sounds like. <laughs> I feel like um, Bartel has really approached this whole amp as the amp to be in a band mix, a band setting. There's just a character that's, compared to some of my other amps, which are so big and full, but could get lost when there's a bass player and a drummer and a singer and other instruments, potentially. I feel like this is made to fit in the right place where a guitar should fit, right? It doesn't really let you get into the wrong settings. And so I feel like if you're up there in your rehearsal or on stage or whatever and you need to tweak between songs or just to find your tone for for that band it's pretty easy probably whereas compared to um compared to the two rock classic reverb which i think you probably have to tweak around a lot to fit it into the right settings for for the mix but on the other hand sounds so big and full in the room um and feels great for solo playing with this one, I feel like I have to take in mind that there should be a bass player underneath me, 
when I'm in these plexi settings. Just as an example, which I would never use, I've now kept the same settings, but turned the bass from zero to 10. So it's full on, and obviously you're getting too much bass here, but it does actually clean up the sound, because as I said, the gain structure changes when you change the tone. So this is just to show you that in a particular example. <laughs> Show you the complexity of this amp and its tone controls I've kept the bass where it was a second ago where it was just too much too bassy too muddy and not a tone you would use and I've whacked the treble up to the same level and you can see immediately there's not too much of either so it's not just a standard tone control um, I hope this is coming across in this demo <laughs> Okay, so now I've dialed in the full-on blackface sound, that's both tones on 10, channel gain volume on 3, master volume full-on, and it's, you know, you get a reasonable amount of volume, no doubt good enough for like a small venue and a medium-sized venue, I assume you'd mic it up anyway. What I wanted to show you here was, when I increased the channel volume to 7 in the second clip, I reduced the master volume by a couple of notches, not too much. but the gain doesn't get out of control. You know, in other amps, the gain just does what the gain does, no matter how you set the tone. Here, everything is interactive. It's really complex, and it's taken me a while to get my head around how to dial in good sounds, uh, which, I, as I said, I'm gonna show you probably in a part two, because this is getting longer than I expected. Hopefully, I'll do different sounds for different guitars, and it'll be a cool video, I think. So if you wanna watch that, uh, then yeah, follow along. Anyway, let's hear this. So now you'll hear immediately that if I drop the treble and bass tones a lot to two and keep the volume on seven, I have to drop the master volume to five and get a completely different gain structure. You know, I'm just reiterating this over and over again, but we're getting a lot of different, you know, positions in the tone here, so you can really get a, a handle on it. <laughs> Okay, so I'd say the reverb is an absolutely core part of this amp. It's one of the most versatile, biggest, splashiest sounding, fine tunable reverbs I've come across, and it has two controls, the mix and the dwell. Now, I wanna get this right, so give me one second, I'm gonna just remind myself. So the dwell control determines how much signal is sent to the reverb pan. Uh, if you turn it up to the max, you're going to get a hugely surfy, splashy, wobbly sound. It's more mellow when it's lower down. And then the mix control determines how much of that reverb gets into your signal path and is the equivalent of a normal one control reverb knob on a Fender amp, for example. So let's just hear a bit of reverb. <laughs> Thank you. 
So the tremolo controls act as you would expect, and so I'm not going into too much depth with it. I just want you to hear it, basically. I love the tremolo on this amp, as I do on the Tone King Sky King, and pretty much any amp that has tremolo. But what I find, compared to the older Fender amps, that um, tremolos on these newer boutique amps are just a bit better, to be honest. Uh, there's more control, you can get slower, you can, it just feels more all-encompassing, right? And with cabinet design that's so intended to bring uh, a variety of things, I'd say from warmth, I'd say warmth over clarity is what I find with this sort of amp, which I love, and a feeling of like enveloping you in the sound when you're in the room. And so tremolos just work great. Let's just hear a short bit. end of this um, demo and this is the first episode of what's probably going to be at least three more parts and I'm going to break each part into the best few sounds I can get for a Les Paul episode one the best few episode a few sounds I can get for strap and then telly and then probably my SG as well separately I think that's the best way of breaking this amp down it's it's so complex and with other amps that I've got I always find there's one position where I just love it for any guitar and just tiny tweaks just to, to get the EQ right. With this one, each guitar could have a different setting and it's so much fun to sort of go between them. But now if you've seen this, you know how it works. And so I don't need to explain that in each video and we can just sort of think about the, the bigger picture of when I'm using a plexi sound or a, a Fender blackface sound or whatever and talk about why I think it works for that guitar and be a bit more musical with it. I don't, I try to do fewer and fewer of these demo type things because it's not my favorite form of video, but in this case, I think I had to explain to you how the tone controls work, how it interacts with the gain, how, um, uh, you know, for example, the blackface sound in this amp just doesn't have the potential to be hugely loud because it's limited by the gain being lower, etc. And that the reverb is just magical and fantastic and the tremolo is as good as you'd expect from Mark Bartel. Uh, if you've heard other amps of his. Um, yeah, there's just one last clip at the end with a random setting that I thought sounded pretty good, sort of black facey with a bit more oomph from a higher volume. I turned down the treble a little bit to try and fill in the whole sound with some more bass. And yeah, hopefully I'll be out with the first of the next episodes of the Bar uh, Bartel Roseland series in a few days, um, depending. So yeah, thanks for watching. And we're really getting closer to 6,000 subs, which is when I'm going to give away this. And I always get to this point with a giveaway where I know 250 subs left to get is probably one month, hopefully, if things go as normal. They could be quicker. I get excited about the next giveaway. I already know what the next pedal giveaway is going to be. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. But this one I'm also excited about because I know a lot of people want this pedal. It's quite an expensive pedal and I'm really happy to give it away. The King Tone Duelist. Just subscribe to the channel and comment on a video. And uh, yeah, you'll be in the hat for the next one, for the next giveaway, which hopefully will be in about a month's time. All right, see you in a few days. Cheers.